Trying to solve crimes in 2021 comes with all the usual difficulties, as well as trying to tackle the global circumstances when there might not be as many witnesses in public places. Most serious crimes are solved relatively quickly, but many will go into 2022 still looking for answers in these unsolved mysteries. Number 5 Crystal Turner and Kylan Schult were reported missing after they didn't show up for work. A missing person investigation began, but this quickly turned into an unsolved true crime. Crystal and Kylan married in April and were enjoying life as newlyweds in Moab, Utah. They'd met years earlier on a hike and bonded over their love for the outdoors. They liked to spend time camping in the nearby LaSalle Mountains. It was here that Crystal and Kylan were camping in August of 2021. It was close enough so they could still go to work in Moab, where Kylan worked at a grocery store and Crystal worked at a fast food restaurant. They could also meet up with friends at the local pub. This was where their friends met up with them for the final time. It was August 13th when they went to Woody's Tavern on Main Street with some friends. During the evening, they mentioned a creepy man who was camping near their campsite. They also told a family member about this strange individual, but they never described the man. They also didn't go into any details about what it was about the man that creeped them out so much, or if they did, this information hasn't been made public. But this was more than just a passing observation about someone they had noticed. The man was making them so uncomfortable they were planning on moving campsites. After the trip to the pub, Crystal and Kylan went to a friend's house. They stayed there until just after midnight and returned to their campsite at about 1 a.m. This was the last time they were seen alive. Both Crystal and Kylan were due to work early shifts on August 15th. When they didn't show up, their friends were worried. This was very out of character. After a second day without anybody seeing them, they were reported missing. A friend went down to the campsite on August 18th. There, she found one of the women's bodies. She had suffered multiple wounds. Fearing the attacker might still have been nearby, the friend went to her car and contacted police. Police found the second body in a similar state not far away. Police determined that neither of the women were responsible for the attack. Someone else had taken both of their lives. Briefly, it was thought the case might have been connected to the disappearance of Gabby Petito, as eyewitnesses had seen Gabby and her boyfriend arguing at the same grocery store where Kylan worked, but it's now believed the two cases are unrelated. The case still remains unsolved. There have been several requests for information, and Kylan's father ran a clue booth to try to get leads, but so far, it seems the case has gone cold. Number 4 in August of 2021, a strange true crime occurred in Marion County, Portland. Travis and Jamie Lynn Jutton were a happily married couple. They met online and married in 2018. According to their friends, their love had only grown since then. In August, they were looking forward to their first trip away as a married couple and were due to fly to Hawaii on the 13th. In preparation, a friend was staying with them the night before they were due to leave. The friend was going to house sit for them and look after their cat. At around 3 a.m. that morning, a masked intruder broke into their home. But rather than try to rob the house, the unidentified man went to the couple's bedroom. Armed with a bladed weapon, the criminal attacked the couple, waking them in the process. Despite the fact that he had been fast asleep moments ago, Travis tried to protect Jamie Lynn and took the brunt of the attack himself. The friend was awoken in the scuffle and came into the room. This apparently scared off the intruder who fled from the scene. Police and emergency responders arrived not long after, but it was too late for Travis and he had already passed away. Jamie Lynn had suffered a number of wounds from the bladed weapon, including one to her hand that damaged her nerves as well as other wounds. But thankfully, she survived the attack. The case is especially strange because it doesn't follow any of the patterns of typical break-ins. Someone who breaks in to steal from a house typically doesn't attack the victims unless they're disturbed. 
If the criminal was someone who wanted to take their lives, it's strange they would have used a firearm. It's almost like a crime of passion, but it was also clearly premeditated. It took three weeks for police to go to social media to ask for anyone with information to come forward. They didn't indicate whether they believed the couple had been picked at random or if the criminal may have known the victim. On social media, a number of residents mentioned a drifter that they had seen in the days and weeks before the attack, but it's not clear if this was a lead police were able to dive into. In the months since, there have been no further updates on social or local media, and it seems the criminal is still at large, and the reason why they committed such a horrific crime remains a mystery. Number 3 Jesse Averett's friends and family couldn't imagine anyone wanting to hurt him. People who had known him most of their lives, and those who had only known him for a short while, all agreed that he was nothing but a kind person. So when his mother got a call in the middle of the night that someone had sent bullets through his front window, she was shocked. The true crime occurred in the early hours of the morning on March 4th. Jesse was at his home in Lexington, Kentucky with his partner of more than 10 years. He was a nursing student at the University of Kentucky and would be graduating by the end of the year. He and his partner, Brandon, were engaged in planning on buying their first home together. They had a lot of plans for the future, but at around 2 a.m. that morning, his focus was on playing a video game while Brandon was in another room. Without warning, someone began firing through the window. Police would later find 18 bullets had hit the house. A number of them had struck Jesse. Brandon called emergency services and Jesse was taken to the hospital, but it was too late. The investigation into who took Jesse's life started right away. Witnesses reported seeing a car speeding away from the scene of the crime. Neighbors claimed that the only people they had really seen on the streets were residents or delivery people. So it seemed likely the car contained the criminal responsible. Unfortunately, a description of the car itself is still missing. Police believe the crime was a drive-by attack, but that neither Jesse nor his fiance were the intended targets. Neither had any enemies that were capable of committing such an act. Despite the outpouring of love for Jesse's friends and family, police have been given little in the way of information to work with since the crime, and it's now become a cold case. In December, they launched a new appeal for information, and Jesse's family believe whoever was responsible must have told someone about their crime in the time since. Number 2 The strange disappearance and passing of Monisha McKinley in Indianapolis in October of 2021 is a true crime case that has far more questions than answers. On October 17, Monisha's sister found her front door open and went inside to find Monisha's body in the bathtub. She had bullet wounds and was no longer alive, and the only problem was Monisha definitely hadn't been there four days earlier when she was reported missing. Monisha was a 25-year-old home health care worker. She was very close to her family, especially her three young sons. Few details surrounding Monisha's case have been made public, and little information is known. But at some point before October 13th, her family had noticed she was missing. They searched her home in Indianapolis, Indiana, but found no sign of Monisha. Some items were also missing from her house, including her SUV. It was enough of a concern for Monisha's family to report her missing. It was four days later when one of Monisha's sisters visited the house again. She was surprised to find the front door open, which presumably wasn't how they had left the house. The family member went inside and eventually upstairs in search of Monisha. She found Monisha in her bathtub and contacted police. The items like her car were still missing. After the initial call for information from the police, there hasn't been any update on this case. Because of this, there are lots of questions that remain unanswered, especially concerning the timeline. It's easy to assume her disappearance and passing are connected, but it's not known if the criminal involved brought her back to her home to take her life, or if they simply left her body there. 
It's not known if Monisha had any enemies, and nobody has been arrested as of the last update. But it's possible her family already has a suspect in mind. According to the family, they had been getting threats online from someone potentially involved in the case. Number 1 In January of 2021, a gang-related conflict that had been raging for months took the life of an innocent man and injured his friend. Mustafa Naman and a friend were two of hundreds of people attending a boxing match in Hertzville, Sydney on January 30th. They left the venue between 10.30 and 11 p.m. and were getting into their white Mercedes when bullets pierced the car's windows. Both Mustafa and his friend were struck. Bystanders tried to get help for both men and they were taken to the hospital, but Mustafa later passed away. This was just the latest in the ongoing spate of violence and serious crimes that seemed to have been triggered in 2020. The Alamdine and Ham's families, as well as other career criminals, had been locked in conflict which had resulted in multiple attacks and claimed lives. But Mustafa and his friend had no connection to either gang. It was briefly considered that he may have been related to a man who ran a business that owed a lot of money, but it turned out the fact that they shared surnames was just a coincidence. Police had always thought the crime looked like a hit, but without anybody who would want to hurt either man, that just didn't make sense. It was possible the attack on Mustafa had nothing to do with the ongoing gang conflict that was terrorizing Sydney, but then police made an important discovery. Two members of the Hams gang had also been in the crowd at the boxing event. They had left just before Mustafa and left in an identical car to the one Mustafa and his friend had been traveling in. Now it looked very much like this was a tragic case of mistaken identity. Almost a year on, police still have not tracked down who was responsible. Recently, police have started a new push for information to try to solve this true crime. Even though it seems likely one of the Ham's gang enemies are responsible for the hit, determining who exactly was behind the crime in Hertzville last January isn't easy. Police have released CCTV and dashcam footage of the men shortly before and after the scene of the crime. They traveled in a gray Porsche that had been stolen from Yowie Bay in November and was dismantled after the January attack. The conflict in Sydney is still ongoing, but hopefully catching the criminals responsible for the crime might save innocent lives in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts and I'll catch you guys in the next video.